I am a mom of three beautiful kids, um, Hawk, Brooks, and Hope, and I've been a single parent for 10 years. And I not only had a tumor in my pancreas, but I also had a metastasis um, that had spread to my liver. It is probably uh, the most lethal. And I'd say, no, I need 10 years so that I can raise my kids and see them through high school. And they, they just kind of looked down. They, they couldn't even look me in the eyes and I will be celebrating my two-year anniversary next month um, after being told that I would have a less than 1% survival rate and probably less than six months to live. Fortunately, there was a medication called Fulfirinox, which is a combination of four um, therapies uh, that was just approved by the FDA um, earlier that year, and I went on that. It's a really tough chemo, um, and I started that initially. What was the worst part of this experience? Um, I think the worst part is when you just don't feel well and you're pretty much stuck in bed during those chemo weeks. And so sometimes that's hard to know that I'm missing out on time with my kids or missing their activities. Um, I try to avoid places that might have an exposure risk since my um, immune system is compromised from all of the chemotherapy. Fulfirinox um, really uh, accelerated my neuropathy and so I actually don't feel anything below my knees. And so that's been difficult because I'm a, a fall risk and the last thing I need to do is to fall and break something because then that would prohibit me from being on chemotherapy for a while. So um, that's been kind of tough because you feel a little bit more like you're limited in your activity and functional level. Um, but you know what? In the big picture of things, it's, it's really no big deal. I'm here and I'm grateful and I'm happy. Um, despite all of this, I'm probably the happiest I've ever been, probably because I'm the most grateful I've ever been. I've had over uh, 50 weeks of chemotherapy um, and so basically kind of every other week. Um, one chemotherapy for a while was um, three weeks on, one week off, but my current um, schedule is every other week. And so I've always done chemotherapy. Uh, in February 2015 I had the middle part of my pancreas removed and um, praise God I haven't had any recurrence of my primary pancreatic tumor. And then I've also undergone um, some radiation uh, through a procedure called SirSpheres, and I've also had uh, two radiofrequency ablation of liver mats. And fortunately, my last PET scan showed no evidence of any tumor activity. Um, what were your treatments like? You know, they're tough. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They're tough, but you know, I think a lot of it is your mindset and your attitude and your faith and surrounding yourself with people who love you and believe in you. And so I really am at a place where I just come from a place of gratitude and I wake up every morning and I thank God for today and I thank him for tomorrow because I know there's going to be a tomorrow. And then I ask him, you know, what can I do? To serve people today? What can I do to be a better person? And I think you get to a point where you're just willing to endure whatever it takes to be here because it's really, really important that I be here. I be here for my kids and I hope to go back to practicing medicine. I miss my patients and I want to be here to serve them and I want to be here to serve my community. Dr. Jill has been a real inspiration to a lot of people and especially our family. She has been defeating the odds, uh, but it has come at a cost. Her costs are uh, pain and suffering and numbness and just tiredness all the time and has just gone through weeks and weeks and weeks of chemotherapy and it's really an inspiration to all of us because she doesn't take anything for granted and she's thankful for everything that she has. So I challenge all of us, and not just you guys, but me too, and our family, to give back to others and really rethink what we're taking for granted.